Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. It's Tuesday, September 3rd, and we're waiting on a big storm. We've been waiting for days and days and days. If you would have asked me last week, the storm would have already been gone by now. But it's still sitting out there in the Gulf. Oh, we got to turn that down. There we go. And uh, so we're waiting on a storm. We're hoping that it doesn't affect our flight to California for Lightbox coming up because... Uh, we got to get out there, and right now the Orlando International Airport is closed. So hopefully it'll be. We fly out on Thursday. We're hoping that uh, it'll still be. It'll be open back up, and we'll be ready to go. Here's but we're not going to. Yeah, we're not going to worry about that today. We're going to draw again. I want to get a few last drawings in for our light box showing. So speaking of which, we're going to be at light box uh, September sixth through the eighth, and uh, we're going to have a blast. I'm going to be doing some lectures. I'm going to be selling prints. I'm going to be selling originals. I've got all of these. I've got my second book now. Filling up my second book of drawings. You can see I've got a whole bunch of drawings here. And uh, having a fun... I'm having a great time with them, actually. Uh, I'm up to uh, almost 60 drawings. I didn't hit my 100, but I've got 60 or 59 or something like Show that. Show the drawings real quick, because I still had it on the, uh, oh. on the advertisement. My bad. Right here. I didn't know you were showing them. Oh, that's okay. And right here. And right here. And well, we should maybe even go to the down shooter. Yeah, but we've seen you've seen a lot of these. Uh, I've got glare on these. They're in my my little book. If you come to my booth, I'm in booth two zero three at Lightbox. If you come to my booth, you'll be able to page through these books and maybe pick out a drawing that you can purchase. The prices are going to be between one fifty and one hundred dollars. So come on down and check them out. Uh, it's going to be awesome. So we're going to have the drawing, original art, prints. I'm going to be lecturing. The event itself is going to be really great. So uh, go ahead and check that out. That's at lightboxexpo.com, I believe it is. So it's in that September 6th through the 8th. So it's this coming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So if you're in the area, come on out. And um, also, I want to talk about our... Um, uh, Patreon. No, we've got uh, our sep our uh, Labor Day sale. We've extended it a day. So today is the last day to get 30% off of everything. So if you want a really good deal, um, and it, the, there's a lot of people have been hitting the site this weekend, come on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and everything is 30% off. And uh, stay hydrated, my friend. Stay thirsty, my friend. It's hot in here. It's hot in here. It's hot in here. And then Patreon. Go check out our Patreon page. It's uh, slowly filling up. It's really cool. Um, matter of fact, we're due to get some new images in there. Um, and uh, if you come in at the $1 a month level, you can download uh, images each month that you can do whatever you want with. Use them as wallpaper, whatever. Um, if at the $5 tier, you'll be able to get the Photoshop file so you can break those down and see how I've created the images that I create. And then at the $10 tier, we're going to be doing some uh, live streams just for Patreon, and which uh, we're due for one. So we got to get one of those done before maybe we go. So, uh, and if not, maybe right when we get back. So um, there's that. So Patreon, go to patreon.com uh, slash Aaron Blaze Art. That's it right there. Yeah, there it is. And um, we really appreciate it because it helps us out. Every little bit helps. It enables us to uh, freeze us up to, able to be able to create more content for you guys. And that's exactly what I want to do. Now, we're going to break out really quick uh, before we get to drawing. Oh, oh, by the way, I got Dustin. I got Dustin with me today, like I always do. Hi. And uh, actually, we've had a pretty good couple of days. It's been kind of fun with the yeah. hurricane coming. It's all been very surreal around here. It's like all the businesses are closed down. I went to the bank today, and they they closed at like two o'clock. But it's sunny out, and it's you know we're getting a little bit of rain. And yeah, yeah, I don't think we're going to get anything from the storm. Or we might get a little bit of rain, but it's weird because everything's everything's out of whack. It's what about of, the uh, workshop though? The Oh, I for, I, yeah, what am I, I completely forgot. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm, well, I've told you, my brain is a little fried today. Probably the biggest that thing that I forgot is that September 28th. <laughs> Holy cow, September 28th, my my live character design 
workshop online. Uh, it's going to be a six-hour course that you guys can join me on. And that I'm really excited about. I just got, I'm so caught up with the storm and whether or not we're going to make it out for Lightbox, I completely forgot about our other uh, master class that we have coming up on September 28th. That's going to be at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So do your math for you folks that are living in Europe or, or west of me. Um, it's going to be great. I'm going to be covering all the stuff that I do in my normal character design course, but we're also going to be doing stuff live. I'm going to be creating some new characters. And you guys are going to be able to ask me questions. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a, a fair number of people signed up so far, and uh, um, spaces are limited. We're, we're cutting it off at 300 people. So once we hit that, you're going to miss the boat. So if you want to join for a good character design course, come and join us September 28th. Go to CreatureArtTeacher.com, and you can get all the information there. All right? So that's September 28th, character design. It's going to be great. And, uh, and then once again, like I said, I've got Dustin here with me today, and we've got Nick Birch in Sarasota. He's going to be answering questions. But before we go forward, I got something in the mail the other day, and I want to show it to you guys. Um, I don't usually promote things. If somebody, somebody sends me something and wants me to try I usually don't do that. I only promote things that I like the, like the arties and things like that, my art bags that you can see back here. Um, something that comes across my desk that um, really raises my eyebrows, I'll promote. And so I was a little bit leery at first about whether that or not this is something I wanted to do, but I got this easel in the mail, and I absolutely love it. It's it's like no other easel I've ever used, and I want to show you guys this, show it to you, and and uh, it's really cool. So once you switch over, you switch the, the uh, there you go, everydayeasel.com. Is that the Sorry, official, it's hot in here. Is that the official name of the easel? Easy easel? Uh, no, I'm not sure if it's the... Uh, it's Wonder easel? easel. I think it's the Wonder Easel. Wonder but, easel. but go to everydayeasel.com and uh, you can get more on it. There's... Um, they've got a, uh, uh, a little film in there that you can check out and everything else. But this is the easel. And, um, this is it sitting up. And I want to... Before I go over what the surface is, first of all, I want to show you that um, it's got a very nice little lever right here. It's all really nicely put together. And right now they're doing pre-orders. And if you pre-order it now, you can save up to $600 on the, on the original order. So it lays flat. It lays any way you want. You can, just, you can move it to any orientation, lock it into place. It's great, okay? So there's that. So I'm going to bring it back up. And then it's got a, uh, a piston that controls the up and down. So all I have to do is squeeze a little lever on the left side over here and the easel very smoothly will come up into place. Now what makes this easel really cool that I love so much is this surface. It's magnetic, okay? And so let's say I have some scrap um, you know, that I want to use as reference. Some, you know, I just take the magnet, throw it up there and I can work. Now, now you say, what if I have a canvas? Well, this is what's really cool. We have these brackets, okay, that, that are like this. And what they do, them? well, I'm going to show right here. They attach these brackets like this. They're magnetic. And they've got these little screws on them. And they attach to the back of your canvas on your stretchers, okay? So I'm going to put this one on here. Tighten it down. It goes on super, super easy. Like so, and this is what's great about it. So let's say I want to work. Boom. I can go this way. I can go, well, let me move the stuff out of the way. This way. I'm going to move this over here. Like that. And what's cool about this is I can I can turn this any way I want to get any kind of orientation I want. It's not going to fall off the the uh, the easel. And if I have a big piece, I can I can uh, orient it anywhere. Like it, it'll go off the off the easel itself. And as long as I have my magnets on the canvas on either uh, where it's able to touch, it'll still hold it in place. These magnets are incredibly. <laughs> incredibly strong so you can see this is this creates a little spot for uh, putting my brushes it creates a little shelf boom just like that it's completely 
customizable. Here's another one for adding more uh, uh, pencils and things like that. This is, if I'm laying it down, I want to place, uh, it's got a little armrest. You know, that, that sits in place, but it's got all these great accessories that go with it. It's an amazing easel. And uh, like I said, it, you know, when I first heard about it, and they asked me to test it out, I thought, okay, you know, how different can an easel be? And because uh, I've, I've got the same easel that I've used for 25 years, and it's it is a perfectly fine easel. Um, but there's certain things about it that have always bugged me, like you know, the up and down, and how just the way it, it, I've always wanted to get a different easel. And, uh, and then this came along, and it's so interesting. I never thought about having an easel that's magnetic. And uh, it's, <laughs> like I said, these are super, super tight. There you go. So nothing is going to fall off. And you can orient it any way you want. So, uh, matter of fact, in the next couple of weeks, because I love this easel so much, uh, we're going to give it a test. And uh, we're going to do some live streaming. I'm going to do some oil painting. And uh, we'll... We'll do that. We'll do some live streaming uh, using this easel. But go to uh, everydayeasel.com. It's a really cool product, um, extremely well made. And if you get it now, uh, you can get it at a really great deal and you'll save 600 bucks. Um, it's not a cheap easel, but it's an awesome easel. Um, and like I said, it's uh, really kind of beautifully made, sits really well. Um, yeah, it's great. So everydayeasel.com, go check that out, and uh, you'll you'll be off to the races. It's a, um, I, a matter of fact, this canvas right here. This is one that I was working on a few years ago, and I never finished. And it's got really big, heavy stretchers on it on the back, and uh, I threw that on there, stuck right to the right to the easel, and with no problem at all. It was awesome, right to it, and I just had it sitting like that. So anyway, go check it out, everydayeasel.com, and, uh, and see it for yourself. Go check out the, uh, the video that they have on there. I, I love this thing, and uh, I'm going to be using the heck out of it. And so, like I said, I'm going to uh, do a live stream in the next couple of weeks where I'm going to be painting, uh, doing some oil painting on it, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, there you go. Let's get back to, let's get to drawing. Everyday Easel. Dot com. It's dot com. It's dot com. Oh, man, I am so thirsty today. <laughs> it's hot. All right, what are we going to draw? I'm going to draw... I think I'm just going to start with an Elefante. 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 I, I was really inspired by... Uh, there is a photographer... That, I can't remember his name now. Doggone it. And people are, uh, there are people asking the uh, the retail price on the... Uh, go to the website. I don't know what the retail price is. So go to the website and check it out. It'll be there. So um, uh, I don't remember what it is. I think it might... I can't remember. But go to go to the website, everydayeasel.com, and all the information is there. There's, uh, there's a video that shows even more of what uh, all the accessories that I had. Uh, it's very, very cool, and uh, I dig it. Someone's suggesting, how about uh, lion cubs riding on a giraffe leg like uh, kids? Oh, yeah, someone uh, suggested that a few weeks ago. Yeah, last week as well. Uh, I'm going to do an elephant first. Gotcha. Bring forth the questions. Elephants are... Uh, African elephants have this big hourglass kind of look to their to their heads. I realize we, we did not do. Oh, we didn't pull up uh, deep, thoughts. deep Thoughts. Sorry, Nick. We didn't pull up Deep Thoughts. We got so caught up in making sure that we got everything done for the easel. So you don't mind if I shrink up your... Oh, no. Oh, I gotta, I gotta bring this. Let me pull this out a little bit. Whoops. There we go. I just want to make sure I'm not. I'm gonna steal your elephant real quick so I can shrink it down. Huh? What? It doesn't want to 
shrink. Yeah, Please. just just hit the minus. Control minus. Oh, okay. Command minus. Command minus. There you go. There we go. There we go. But, um, what was the photographer's name? I got to pull it up so I can give him some credit. He, uh, he had these elephants. He photographed these elephants with these incredibly beautiful tusks. Is that too small? No. All right. And, um, and it really inspired me. I wanted to do just this big bull. I want to feel like you're looking up at him. It's the everyday easel. Draw the Beatles as the Beatles. <laughs> oh, Nick says new Patreon images are going up today. What are you doing? I'm trying to get your... Oh, get rid of like, that. Just dump I'm, it. I'm trying to figure out where the mouse is. Give me the mouse. There Let me is. have it. <laughs> We're getting all whacked out here. <laughs> where is it? There it is. And boom. Get rid of that. Boom. Get rid of that. Here we go. Move this over. There. All right. Caitlin on Facebook says, 10 drawings per day for this week. You can do it. No, I can't. <laughs> There's no way I can get 10 drawings done a day. I already tried. I get burned out. One of the things I love about the... the oh, oh. Look at my Facebook real quick, Dustin, and scroll down to where I posted this. And I'll have his name, the the photographer's name. Because I really want people to look at this, uh, this uh, photographer. thickness to their feet that I really love. Actually, I want to drop that down even more. I'm bring this way down. I might do this with the trunk. I want to get that trunk out of the way. I want, I want you to see the feet. And I want the camera, or the view, to be almost right at ground level. David Yarrow. David Yarrow, thank you. Yes, that was him. Look up David Yarrow. I mean, those are just really super moving images that he's created. Yeah, that's my inspiration right there. Yeah, pretty nice, huh, Dustin? Oh, beauty. 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 That's beauty. Yeah, beauty. If I'm drawing through right now. I'm not worrying about the... <clears throat> the trunk. The trunk. When you're uh, drawing off stream, uh, what uh, kind of music do you listen to? Um, I listen to music that's easy to listen to, not necessarily easy listening music, but easy to listen to um, so I don't get distracted from what I'm doing. So, but sometimes, I, I mean, I'll get, I'll get some good rock and roll going, I'll get, sometimes I'll get jazz going, sometimes I'll get blues, blues. Um, it really depends on my mood. You listen like electronic, like I've heard you listen to. Oh, like, I do a lot of electronic, stu you know, type type stuff. Yeah, like Dead Mouse and Daft Punk. Yeah, kind of. I kind of like that stuff when I'm drawing. 
That I've just kind of recently come into and uh, got into, you know? Yeah. And, like, Dead Mouse and Daft Punk are, like, my favorite kinds of, um, the, of that, like, electro-techno kind of music. Yeah. Because there's the other kind of techno where it's, like, the, the... <laughs> yeah, that's just like, yeah, no. <laughs> no. Where it's just so fast, like... <laughs> yeah, no, I don't like that. Like, no, no. <laughs> but I do... Let me get this down here. I do like some of that, that you know, chill-out type electronic music. Aaron Dustin, are you guys watching Peaky Blinders? I thought um, you, you were watching it, weren't you? I was watching it, but uh, I don't think the, the latest season has been added on to Netflix. I've been mainly been watching the shows, whatever comes on Netflix. So, like, seasons that are, like, a year old. Do you have, uh, do you have, um, do you have Amazon Prime? I do. Because I've been watching Carnival Row, and I loved Carnival Row. Is that out? Yeah. Yeah, I need to go see it. I need to watch that. Yeah, so it's, it's good. Yeah. Um, I've been, it, it goes by really fast. It's a pretty simple. It's simple, but um, uh, there's some really cool parts to it. Yeah, I started watching um, NCIS a couple of weeks ago from like season one, uh -huh. like the very beginning, and I still have, like, I'm on season three, and I still have like another twelve seasons to go through. <laughs> wow. So, but yeah, I definitely want to watch Carnival Row. That looks amazing. Labor Day sale is extended. Oh, yeah, we already did that. We covered that, the Labor Day sale. Um, that's extended through today. Today is the last day. Warren asks, those tusks get me thinking. Any interest in paleo art? Not necessarily dinosaurs, but mammoths and such. You know, I have been interested in that. Um, there's some artists. There's one artist I follow in particular. I can't remember his name um, off the top of my head. I think he's Polish. But he does incredible paleo art. And uh, it just blows me away. Just absolutely incredible. Uh, YouTube question. Hi, Aaron. I just purchased the annual membership, and I'm off doing the wolf tutorials, and it's awesome. Have you thought about making a rodents tutorial? Um, you know what? I haven't really, uh, but I could. Um, yeah, I really haven't thought about that because I, di I didn't... Um, I just never thought about it so yeah I could definitely easily do that someone's suggesting uh, what about a few big bears looking curiously at a koala bear oh that's a cool idea <clears throat> um, have you drawn have, have you ever drawn any camels and if so how many camels have you drawn <laughs> uh, you know what you know I don't know that I other than drawing camels at the zoo I have drawn a few camels at the zoo. Um, maybe three? <laughs> That's a very specific question. Uh, when are you going to be coming to uh, Brazil again? That we're not sure. Um, not sure when we're coming to Brazil again. Uh, it'll probably be a couple of years from now. Um, we've just, we're trying to cut back a little bit on our travel. Uh, just so we can get some of our other projects done, like Snow Bear and, uh, you know, some of the other things that we've got rolling that we've been wanting to finish for quite a while. Snow Bear is a big one. Uh, what eraser are you uh, using? This is just a regular gum eraser, kneaded eraser. So it's the kind that stretches out. Uh -huh. uh, it's getting pretty full of lead, so it's getting, uh, or graphite, it's getting a little bit gooey. Hi, Aaron. Does, Hi. <laughs> does ink work on the type of paper um, you're using now, as I would uh, like to use it for uh, Inktober? Yeah, I'm using ink right now. These are ink pens. Yeah. Matter of fact, you know what I might do? Hmm. Give me that, um, let me go over here real quick. What are you doing? What, what are you doing? I've got... Oh boy. I might do an ink wash. Ink wash? I might do an ink wash today. I've got some India ink right here. I need to get my paintbrushes. i got to find those. 
I gotta find my paint the brushes. Paint the brushes. Where did I put those? I don't know. I don't live here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there they are. They're right there. So I, I might do an ink wash. Uh, what projects or uh, courses do you want to finish this year? Well, I definitely want to get a fantasy uh, creatures course. I want to get Birds of Prey. Um, there's several I want to get out there. There's a drawing course that I want to get out for uh, for younger viewers. Um, an introduction to drawing. Uh, and I want to get some, uh, some advanced drawing in there as well. I might do some more uh, pen drawing tutorials, techniques, whatnot, you know. So what I'm doing here is I'm just, just getting down the, the, the basic outline and then I'll be adding the color and shading and everything. But I was really blown away by these elephants and, and uh, was it David Yarrow? Is David that his Yarrow. name? No idea. The photographer, you just told me oh, his yeah. name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is David Yarrow, my mistake. Um, I was really moved by this fo photograph that he had of all these bulls, so I wanted to kind of draw my own version. Of the bull. <laughs> Somebody else is suggesting draw an elephant using the, his trunk as a snorkel. <laughs> That's a good idea. Actually, I love drawing elephants underwater. The elephant underwater, not me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mean I like drawing underwater. I mean, it, is there a difference? <laughs> uh, what kind of charcoal white pencils uh, have you used? Uh, I I use a regular. Uh, it's a char. It's a white charcoal. It's um. It's right here. Back to the drawers again. Yep. I don't use them on my. Uh, oh, they're over here. Generals. These right here. Um, these aren't the white ones, but this is the same brand. So they're Generals charcoal pencils, and I order them in bulk. I actually have to order a new, a new uh, set because I've gone through my white ones. But that's it right there. A right there, right there. <laughs> Do any of the wild elephants still have long tusks like that anymore? Yeah, I mean, this photograph is a, is a recent photograph. So there are some that are still out there that haven't been taken in the really well-protected areas. Is there going to be a live stream Thursday? No, there is no live. I'm glad you brought that up. There is no live stream on Thursday. We are traveling to California on Thursday. So we will, when it's time for the live stream, we will be somewhere over Texas. Oh, so. Okay. Good old Texas. Good old Texas. Are you sure it ain't gonna be a bowl of bone Nope. Uh what draw what number of drawings are you on right now? This would be, let's see. I filled the one book. So it's 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. So this is drawing 59, right here. Right now. Uh, right here. Right here. Uh, here, here, here. Do you work for a video game industry? Nope. Nope, never did, never have. I mean, you did some animations for uh, for some Disney, uh, Disney games. Well, I, yeah, I, but that's not me working for the video game industry. Oh, speaking of which. Yeah, I know. They're, the, they're re-releasing them. Yeah. Yeah, did you see that? Yeah, I saw Yeah, that. the Lion King, the old Lion King uh, and Aladdin games, um, for which I did animation on. What what, what what was the company? I can't remember. Um. But uh, anyway, they're re-releasing the games. Um, it was funny because they wanted some really, you know, back in the day we were in between some projects and the video game company was uh, 
that was making the the Aladdin and the Lion King games, they wanted some really good quality animation in them, so they they sent the game to us. And uh, the people that actually worked on the movies, the Lion King and Aladdin, which was myself and a bunch of the rest of the crew, we got together and we kind of broke up, uh, handed out different sections of the of the game, and we all pitched in and did you know all the animation of the characters in those in the Sega Sega games. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Sega. We did the we did the animation in those in those games. It's pretty cool. When will you be back? Uh, will there be live streams next week? Uh, yes, there will be live streams. Nick says Capcom. What's Capcom? Oh, Capcom uh, is similar to that of Sega, if I'm correct. Oh, that's who's, made, is like, that who's street... re-releasing them? Yeah, Capcom uh, um, has made like the Street Fighter games. Um, gotcha. Yeah. They're, they're a popular gaming company. Uh, but yes, we will be live streaming next week. We get back on Monday... So we'll be back in the saddle again on Tuesday. Next Tuesday. 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 Sega was one of the systems. They were also on Super Nintendo. The game studio was Capcom. Gotcha. 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 What is your recommended gray toned paper? Right here. Strathmore. Gray toned paper. I buy them like 10, 10 pads at a time. This one you can see is almost empty because I've been going through it. They come in uh, pads of 50. And uh, really good quality paper. 50. 50. So I'm just starting to get a little bit of the modeling in here. Good evening, Aaron. Good evening. I, I recently drew Kenai from Brother Bear. Did you ever think that Joaquin Phoenix would be the Joker? <laughs> you know, I can't think of a better choice. Joaquin is, uh, let's say he's very immersive in his work. And, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's an amazing actor. Have you seen the latest... Uh, yeah. Trailer Joker that came out. The movie is going to be week. so disturbing and so good, and I'm uh, I'm excited to see it actually. Yeah, I love that last little bit um, after it says, "Can you announce me as the Joker?" Yeah, and like it shows the title, but it's but it's him like slowly dancing behind the curtains. I love that little send in the clown. Yeah, it's like. Oh, that is just... Mm, yeah. It's going to be good. And uh, from earlier, speaking of oil paintings, uh, do you know Greg Manches? <laughs> I get this question every week. I and don't so know him personally, but I'm, ho I'm hoping I get to meet him actually on this trip to, uh, to Lightbox. Lightbox, because I think he's going to be there. What do you think of his artwork? I love his artwork. I, last time he was at... Um, he was at a, a CTN and had a, a booth set up, and I wanted to buy one of his paintings, but it wasn't for sale. Do you guys take part in Inktober, or are you generally too busy? Um, I did the last couple years. Last year, I didn't. I was too busy. But I'll probably do it this year. Do you still ever get frustrated with a drawing and just toss it? Yes, these are all drawings that I didn't like, that I tossed, that I just thought were crappy, and threw them aside. So the answer is yes. Absolutely. Did you see Into the Spider-Verse? I did. I loved it. 
I really, really loved it. You saw it, right, Dustin? Oh, yeah. Many, many times I still watch it. It's one of my favorite animated features. Uh, was there a difference between animating the game uh, and then animating the films? Yes, there's a huge difference. And animating in the film, we could take as many drawings as it took to, to do whatever we needed to do. But in the game, we were only given like five... Okay, they'd say, okay, you have to do this entire movement in five drawings. Or you have to do this entire movement in three drawings or eight drawings. And so we've never been restricted like that, but it was really interesting because... Um, it really forced us to really find the most dynamic breakdowns and key poses in order to make that animation as dynamic as we could without it being really complex. So it was a, it was a really great lesson in that way. And the one question we get every single week, what is it like working with Walt Disney? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to move on from that. <laughs> Is there anything you would advise uh, or recommend regarding the booth or presenting yourself in the best possible way? The booth? Is that what it said? Yeah, uh, like a like at a convention. Like if you have a if you have a booth at a convention. Well, I definitely think you need to have a, a some sort of banner that really shows off your work and who you are. And then obviously you want the best work you can have at the booth. And then be cool. You know, be humble. In your opinion, what is the best art book uh, for animal drawing? Uh, for intermediate uh, to advanced artists? You know, I get a lot of questions about books in general. What book is the best for this? You know, are there any good um, figure drawing books, things like that? To be honest with you, I don't use books that much. <gasps> Blasphemy. Not for art. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll look at other artists and be inspired by them. Um, for Zeta, I was really inspired by when I was a kid, and I would get all of his books that I could, but they were art books. I, that's where I got most of my inspiration and teaching was just from other artists looking at their art and then going and doing it. That's where you're going to learn. You have to do it. I'm not saying don't look at books, but I just don't have a lot of recommendations because I didn't really use art books when I was learning to draw. I, I did it by drawing. And so that's that's my biggest recommendation for you to do is just get in there and and uh, you can read a thousand books, but you're not going to get any better until you're drawing. So that's where my recommendation is, is just to get in there and do that. Um, I don't have a lot. I don't have any really good suggestions. I can't think of any off the top of my head. I can tell you great artists to look at. You know, any any book that you can find by Bob Kuhn uh, for animal drawing, you'll you'll won't regret it. Bob Kuhn's one of the best. He's since passed, but the man was an incredible uh, animal artist. Robert Bateman, another great one. Guy Koliak, another great one. You know, these are the artists you want to look at. Uh, William Barry, who drew animals not so much as finished paintings, but he drew them from life in Alaska. Um, where's that William Barry book? Got it right up hey. here. Oh, doggone it. Don't tell me. I don't know where it is. You're doing it, Mama? So, this is one that I really recommend if you're looking for inspiration for, uh, you know, animal drawing uh, you know, from life. This is nothing but sketchbooks that William Barry kept. And it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages of his sketchbooks from Alaska. Uh, studies, landscapes, um, birds, mammals, amphibians. I mean, everything you can think of is in this book from Alaska. And they're all beautiful, beautiful studies that he made. And this is one of my prized animal drawing books. Just And, and it, I really learned a lot 
on how to portray animals in the wild, drawing from life by looking at this book. Okay, so it's uh, it's just absolutely incredible. Every there's thousands of drawings in here. It's nothing but his his sketches. Really amazing stuff. So that book I really recommend. Well, with every new course that you make, uh, do you think that you are getting better and better at teaching? I do. Yeah, um, teaching like drawing is you know or like or anything else um you get better the more you do it and so i'm definitely uh i'm a better teacher now than i was two years ago or three years ago or four years ago for sure which states have you lived in over the course of your life and did your job make you move around much uh, no, my job did not make me move around much. I've spent most of my years, I was born in Burlington, Vermont. I lived in Vermont until I was about eight years old, um, until I was eight years old. And then uh, I moved to Florida with my mother and my stepfather. I was in Vermont with my father and my stepmother. And then that got reversed and I ended up in, uh, in Florida in 1976 at the age of eight. And then from there, uh, I lived, I've lived in Florida pretty much my whole life with the exception of in 2004, I moved to California and we were in California for six and a half years. But then after that, I moved back to Florida and here I am. Uh, have you ever planned on drawing insects? I, I've drawn insects a little bit and I, you know, when I do draw them, I really enjoy it. So there, I've got a question over here. What kind of pencils am I currently using? Well, I'm not using pencil. I'm using a pen, and this is a tool, T U L, tool pen. It's a black gel pen that dries waterproof, so I can use marker over the top of it or a wash. Um, and then right here is uh, the white pens that I use are Jelly Roll, Jelly Roll pens, right there, and uh, I buy them. By the box, and uh, and I get either the 08 or one or one O. Don't get the 05s; they're too small; they clog up. Daphne on YouTube has several image suggestions. A little fennec fox showing his big ears with a little elephant. That's good. Uh, a lizard that behaves like dragons. A bat teaching a mouse how to fly. That's kind of I like that. A zebra looking or counting his stripes and frogs playing leapfrog. Those are all great. I like those suggestions. Dustin, what advice would Emperor Palpatine give me if I asked him, should I sign up for the live at, live character design workshop? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Do it. They baited you on that one. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I knew it was I knew it was a joke and I I like jokes like that. Oh yeah. That was good. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Do it. What are your thoughts on the new Lion King? And what do you think uh, if they had a little bit more of a, a cartoon, cartoonish face? Um, I don't know about a cartoonish face. I think I, the one thing I love the movie. I thought it was beautiful. The one thing I do miss is the ex I, I missed is the expressiveness that we had in the original. Um, and I know, you know, what they were doing is something different. So, you know, that's that's cool. It's gone on to become the highest grossing animated film of all time. And I think it's catching up to Avengers right now, isn't it? I think I, I, think I saw something somewhere where it's catching up to Avengers. Which I think is in in insane. Well, I... I As an artist, how long did it take you to be satisfied with your drawings more often than you feel the need for self-improvement? Oh, I, I've always felt, I always feel the need for self-improvement. I don't think I've ever gotten to the point where I feel satisfied. I mean, I feel com more comfortable drawing right now than I did. And that's, you know, that's taken years. Um, and I, but I still have a, a, a sense of, uh, you know, a long way to go, you know. I, I, I know that. 
what is better for drawing animals? Uh, live drawing in a zoo or photo reference? I think live drawing in the zoo because you're seeing those animals in three dimensions. Uh, photo reference is fine. Uh, um, within photo reference, I recommend watching video rather than just looking at still photos. You'll learn a lot more looking at videos. And uh, as to a latecomer, uh, hey Aaron, did you hear that they're re-releasing the Aladdin game you worked on? And will you play it? <laughs> I probably won't play it. I've never been a gamer, but I'm sure Dustin will. You think you'll play it, Dustin? I might. Um, Cause I think it's specifically on the PlayStation Four and the Xbox. I don't remember if it, if they announced it on the Switch. If it's on the Switch, I'll definitely get it. Is that what you currently have? Yeah, I ended up selling my Xbox, and my PlayStation a while back because they ended up becoming uh, paperweights. <laughs> so because. Once I got the Switch, I was all about the Switch. I was all about my PC and the games on there. And I hardly ever touched my Xbox and PlayStation. I was like, yeah, it's time that you guys went. <laughs> yeah. So, so I sold them for cash and uh, in-store cred credit at GameStop. Nick says, we will be in Africa during October, so you're going to miss half of it. Oh, that's right. Well, maybe I'll do some you know, ink drawing while I'm there. And... Uh, um, we're not gonna. I don't think we're gonna have access to uh, upload anything, but I'll at least be able to catch up. Yeah, Nick and I are gonna be in Kenya October fifth through the fifteenth, I believe, and um, I'll definitely do some drawing while I'm there. And because uh, we, we'll get a lot of time to draw uh, in the evenings when we get back to our camp after our game drives, and uh, so you kick back, have a beer or two, and draw. Yeah. Have you ever tried your hand at calligraphy? Uh, I have, and I'm not good at it. Yeah, it takes a real steady hand for that. Yeah, it's 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 a steady hand, and it's also, uh, you know, it's a lot of muscle memory and repetitive practice and things like that. And um, it's a, uh, it's tough. Oh, this is a uh, joke. Nick Nick uh, said it just passed the original Avengers, not even half of Endgame, though. Gotcha. I think this labels as a dad joke. What is the difference between a hippo and a zippo? <laughs> well, a uh, zippo's lighter? The zippo's lighter. <laughs> I get it. One is quite heavy, the other's a little lighter. Yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby's on. Gabby! What, what is your favorite joke? Asked by Gabby. What is my favorite joke? Your favorite joke. Uh, I'm trying to think. All my favorite jokes are like stupid kid jokes. <laughs> like, you know how you catch a polar bear? Mm. You cut a hole in the ice and sprinkle frozen peas around it so that when the bear comes down to take a pee, you kick him right in the ice hole. <laughs> and one of my one of my favorite jokes is uh, a little ex a little explicit for the live stream, but it's the uh, the Irish milk cow story. Yeah, we're gonna keep that one out. <laughs> uh, who voices Snow Bear? Uh, nobody. I'm gonna use real bear sounds. Are you excited to see Klaus by Sergio Pablos? Yes. And we're That's getting a sneak nice. peek of it at us at, uh, at Lightbox. Ah, oh, lucky. Uh, is the last name pronounced Pablos? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Yeah, I finally got a name right. <laughs> Did you watch the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance? I've started the first episode. I know there's a there's definitely an audience for that. Um, it's not quite my bag of tea, or my cup of tea. My bag of tea. Yeah, yeah. Not my cup of tea. <laughs> It's not um, bag of tea. No, you know I like it. I like it, and a lot of people love it. And I'm, I mean, I know I'm in the uh, minority. I'm just not like, yeah. Uh, I love the world. I love Brian Froud's designs and 
all of that. Um, just the whole puppet thing. I'm just, eh. But that's me being, you know, an old crotchety man. I tried to watch the... I, I, I liked the original when it came out. I was in high school, I think. And uh, I, I liked it. And uh, But I tried to rewatch it to get ready for the new series. Oh, man. I couldn't, I couldn't get through like 15 minutes of it. I had to turn it off. I'm sorry. Do you ever, um, I'm trying to figure out what he's trying to say, but, um, uh, do you ever take your camera and take pictures anywhere or everywhere you go? Uh, like, do I take, probably do I take, like, do, do you do take, take photos, photos when for, I, like, maybe reference? Yes, or? I do. I take all my own reference photos everywhere I go. So, like, on this trip to Africa, we'll be shooting thousands and thousands of photos. And when I have Dustin with me, Dustin's kind of taken over as photographer, and then I'm able to draw. So, like when we when we did our, our trip to Montana and uh, Wyoming uh, a few months ago, I was able to just draw and fill sketchbooks while while Dustin did all the photography for me. That was a lot of fun. It was. It was great. And hopefully, Nick will be kind of doing the same thing when we're in uh, we're in Africa. What do you think of Disney made live action uh, version of Brother Bear? I get that question a lot. every stream. Every single one. I think it would be really cool. I think, to be honest with you, I think Brother Bear would be a good uh, uh, live action film. Uh, but I don't think they'll ever do it. The movie was never successful enough financially. Although I heard that they're doing a, uh, a live action. Uh, uh, Lady in the Tramp? No. Um, The flying pirate ships in space. Uh, oh, Treasure Planet. Treasure Planet, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Tom Holland is uh, going to yeah. get a part in that. That would be awesome. See, now that one wasn't really super commercially successful either. No, but... But they're going to do it, so... It's definitely one of the most underrated films. Yeah. So who knows, maybe, maybe we'll get something from Brother Bear, I don't know. I don't think they'll do it, what, Treasure Planet or Brother Bear? No, oh, Brother Bear. They've already announced Treasure Planet. Yeah, I couldn't quite tell if the Treasure Planet stuff was just a hoax or if it was for real. Oh, gotcha. I thought, I, I I thought it was real. I, I personally can't tell. Like, I personally don't know if oh, it's I for real you. or... Okay. But they... But, I mean, it's definitely a possibility. Yeah, I thought it was real. Well, it could be real. That's the thing. Like, I don't know what... Yeah, I thought, it, I thought it was real. <laughs> Dustin, Dust, did you play Okami? A gorgeous stylized game originally released on a PS2 has been re released on PS3, 4, and Nintendo consoles. Um, if it's, if Okami is the one I'm thinking of, where it's the, uh, it's the wolf, and it's like this calligraphy, like, uh, almost like calligraphy, like watercolor kind of. Artistic, artistic style. I never played that, but I loved the artwork for it. Like, it was one of those things where I never played it. Not my cup of tea, but I respect its artwork. Beautiful game. Do you ever have your pet sabotaging your efforts to paint or draw because they crave attention? I have that, and I've had... I would just did a charcoal drawing that my cat crapped on. Oh, yeah, that, that, uh, that whole deal, that was... Came in, and uh, remember, Dustin, we were like, man, it smells like crap in here. And I didn't, so, I couldn't smell it. And, yeah, you're, and I'm, you're I, I, I'm always the one that smells it. I don't know why I couldn't smell it. And then Dustin's like, God, Dad, it smells like crap in here. Couldn't smell it, couldn't smell it. And then finally, I figured it out, and I looked up on top of the shelf where my charcoal drawing was and there it was a big pile of crap right on top of the drawing it was the part where like I like I could I could smell it up high but then when I went low thinking where the where the crap was like I didn't smell anything 
It's like, yeah, it's not, not down here. That's when Dad went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figured out where it was. But that's okay. She's a good cat. She uh, She's normally outdoors, and there's uh, she had gotten attacked by some raccoons. So we brought her inside, and I think she was a little stressed. Have you heard about the new Pixar film, Fi Finding Dorian? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, we already know where Dorian is. He's right off the coast. Just sitting there staring at us. We're having a staring uh, fight. Of all the memes that I've seen, I'm I'm still surprised that they haven't that no one's made a meme of it off the off of Predator with Arnold like yeah. laying on the ground like, Come on, kill me, I'm here That'd <laughs> <laughs> be perfect. We're able to sal uh, salvage the charcoal piece, or will he be redoing the new version? Oh, um, I called it was a cougar, right? Yeah, it was the cougar. I don't know if I'll redo it or not. No, I couldn't really salvage it. I mean, I might do something with it. I don't know. Gamer Jemma says, Hey, Aaron, today is my 32nd birthday. Happy birthday, Gamer Gemma. Gamer Gemma? Gamer and Gemma. I spent the last four few hours of it watching your live stream. Thanks for the good times. You are welcome. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see what the heck is going on. What? Well, what are you know. doing? I don't know. So there's uh there's our elefante so far. Elefante. Getting a nice little close up. Not sure how much you know, but how long would it take for an elephant to grow tusks like that? Oh, you know what? I don't know, but um, it's not overnight. I'll tell you that. <laughs> have you worked on anything on the new Lion King movie no um, I was going to do uh, illustrations for the book a book that came out with it but the, they decided to change um, the content of the book and turned it more into a, a children's book which was really kind of outside the style that I was doing and so I backed out of the deal and someone else took it up, did it instead. a piece of art, even one that I'm happy with, one or two weeks later, I can always find things, uh, things I could have or should have changed. Um, do you experience uh, the same thing and are, are you ever completely satisfied with the finished drawing? That's a good question. Uh, first of all, I do it, I experience that every time. Every time. Um, and no, I don't know that I'm over. I mean, there's times, yeah, when I'm when I'm satisfied, sure. Um, but I can always, you know, a, a lot of times, especially with my digital work, I'll finish an image and then I'll post it, and then I'll come back in the next day and go, oh man, I shouldn't have posted that because I need to do this, this, and this because I'm seeing it in fresh eyes now, you know. And so I'll sit down and and I'll I'll make changes and continue to work on it, and then. Uh, Repost it again after that. I'm all out of questions. Uh, do you have a life preserver for your large Cintiq just in case a hurricane turns to Florida? 
No, we're going to be fine. We're not going to... We're going to be about 100 miles from the eye. So we're not going to really... We'll get a little bit of wind. But we're not going to get much out of it. Imagine, like, like overnight it just turns to a Category 5. Like, now shipping into Florida. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> that won't happen. Don't worry. <laughs> You never know. Do you ever watch Perfect Storm? <laughs> Say hi to your mother for me. <laughs> hey, goat, how's it going? I had, a, I had a goatee like that, just like in Perfect Storm. You ever <laughs> see that movie? <laughs> All right. Say hi to your mom for me, okay? <laughs> just like in Perfect Storm. Just like in Perfect Storm. Some guy just stole my teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube question. What animal are you most looking forward to seeing in Africa? Um, I love seeing the lions. I love hearing the lions when I go to bed. There's nothing like laying in your tent and you hear lions roaring in the distance. It's pretty cool. Uh, and then the elephants. I love, I always love seeing the elephants. And then, well, actually, any of the big cats, too, because um, I've been lucky the last couple times that I've gone to Kenya, I've, I've been able to see leopards. And uh, so I'm really hoping we come up on some leopards. Manny is saying, under poaching pressure, elephants are evolving to losing tusks. Holy crap, really? I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. How long will it take Floridians to drink all the bottled water they just bought? Yeah. Well, well we, we um, yeah, see, I, that drives me nuts. So we went out and we got like eight gallons of, and we got it in jugs. We didn't get the little single serves. But I'm a big advocate of just getting out, you know, fill up jugs out of your faucet ahead of time. You don't need to buy bottled water. I'm planning on upgrading my Wacom Bamboo tablet to a Cintiq. Um, should I get a 16 or a 22? 22. Definitely. If you can swing it, get the bigger one. In the case of Cintiqs, bigger is better. <laughs> Size matters. <laughs> it's not the size, mate. It's how you use it. <laughs> But I also just said faucet water is nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I am definitely the minority in this household when it comes to what's appropriate drinking water. Oh, back in the day in animation, uh, when they had an object in the frame that was going to be used or interacted with, why was it a different color? Like how a dresser would be one color and the, dr and the drawer would, um, to be opened would be a lighter color. Just to make that clear. Just so that it would be clear. That's all. I mean, ultimately, when he got into the movie, it wasn't that way. It's just when we were working on it, you wanted to make sure you knew what, what was supposed to be animated and what wasn't. Have you seen the Taiwanese Formosan Cloud Leopard? Um, cool. I've seen a clouded leopard. Nick says, that's what I did. I have two five-gallon jugs, filled them. If it looks like it's going to be bad, you can fill the tub as well. Exactly. The Taiwanese clouded. Oh yeah, they're beautiful. So you have seen them? Yeah, I've drawn clouded leopards. The the Taiwanese Formosan? Well, that one I don't know. 
I don't know if that's any different than it's. I'm sure it's just a subspecies of cloud leopard. Let me see it. Yeah, that's uh, just that's the same thing. Oh, this face is adorable. Since then the people try to return the water if the storm doesn't come. It drives me nuts. Yeah, it's ridiculous. People really do that? Like yeah. they buy the water and then if the storm doesn't arrive, they're like, oh well never mind. You can take the water back. We'll yeah. Back on. yeah. Wow. I would keep that keep that stock somewhere, you know. Yeah. Or at least through the end of the season. There we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Slowly, slowly, but surely. We're getting there. We're getting there. Super annoying because we were supposed to be at a party at one of my friend's houses. On Saturday, and the freaking storm came in and chased everybody off, so they canceled the party. Are you serious? Yep. Ah. And and then it, the storm had the gall to just kind of sit there. <laughs> Until yesterday, we had a party of our own. We did. I, that was a fun party. That was. We had a good time yesterday. We partied out in the backyard, played in the pool. Yeah, it was more of a, a small get together with Austin, family. myself, and yeah, a family gathering. Yeah, a family get a little, a little family gathering. It was still a lot of fun. And I got a lot of fun pictures of you guys jumping into the pool. Yeah, I uh, partook in a few too many alcoholic beverages. <laughs> It was fun. There we go. There's our buddy. Hey, Aaron, what do you think hey, about... Hey, what's going on? <laughs> what do you think about drawing tiny African man riding that elephant on top of it? Oh, I don't want to do that. Well, first of all, I don't think there's enough room on top of this one. But um, I like the idea, but I'd have to plan that out differently. This one, I just wanted to have this elephant... Just this guy. Just this guy? Just this guy. Hey, this guy. This guy. See, there was this guy. And he did some stuff. And that was about it. Gotta just finish up this trunk here. YouTube question regarding traditional animation. Do you never use a light box? I can understand the benefits of blocking in the keyframes, breakdowns, but what about in-betweens and cleanup? You know, I never used it. Even for t tight in-betweens, I would just flip the paper and see it. I just never did. Yeah, we just let out a fish uh, dad joke. Uh-oh. What did a fish say when he hit the wall? Damn! <laughs> <laughs> You know why you don't play poker in, in uh, Africa? Why? Too many cheetahs. <laughs> why did the chicken cross the road? Mm. I don't know, but that's why I'm asking. <laughs> oh, I got a good knock knock joke. Oh. Uh, okay, you start. Knock knock. Who's there? Annoying cow. <laughs> Annoying cow. <Ooh. laughs> you could draw a bear sitting at a deer stand with binoculars looking for hunters. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that like a big old bear but with like a 
like an orange vest, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> had an idea for a drawing in your head but when you go to draw it uh, draw it down on paper it doesn't look like what's in your head so you have to do more drawings and thumbnailing <laughs> just to get that one idea onto paper yeah that's pretty much it every time that's just how it works baby the details of the trunk all the wrinkles the folds and different planes yeah it's fun I like I like elephants trunks oh many said Aaron uh, we miss the photographer David Yarrow uh, when we visited Troy Siahi? I know. He was, um, I was going through, uh, it's funny you mentioned that, uh, Manny. Um, I saw that, I, I was on David Yarrow's website after I saw the elephant photos, and there, there's the photos that uh, were shot with the wolves and the, with the models in the car and everything. I saw, I, I, was, I meant to call you and let you know. Dr. Lightbox, are you going back to uh, digital art uh, for your live streams, or will you throw a couple of ink sketches like these in here? And oh, I'll throw I'll do these every once in a while because what I'm going to start doing. Oh, that's that's a good segue. Uh, I'm going to start doing about ten of these a week and then auctioning them off each week. So if you guys are interested in buying some uh, after Lightbox, buying some original work, um, I'm going to start selling these each week. And like I said, I'll do about ten a week. And uh, and you'll have the op uh, the option the opportunity to get in there. Have you seen the photos of uh, Hurricane uh, Dorian uh, from the International Space Station? Yeah, it's incredible. I need to see those. Katie Lingham says, "I'm drawing too. It's a nice draw. It's nice drawing alongside you." Hey, cool. Thanks. I'm glad you are. Debating on whether or not I'm going to. Uh, here's the here's the 1.0. I'm actually running out of ink on this one. I'm debating on whether I'm going to do an ink wash over this or not. So, what do you think I'm going to do next after this one? Oh, we might call it after this one, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Just going to call it quick? Just going to do a quick one today? Yeah, well, this isn't so quick. I've still got a little ways to go on it, too. Oh, okay. Oh, because we still have the uh, the ink wash? Yeah. Um, so we're doing some extra detail on this one. Yeah, and I just want to... There's a few things around the yard that still haven't been picked up. I was thinking it's going to be okay, but the more I think about it, I was talking to Vedanta. I'm thinking maybe we should go out and pick up a few of the things so they don't become missiles <laughs> when the storm comes through just in case oh I just I don't know that we're gonna get a ton of wind from it but um, if we do you don't I don't want that stuff flying and it's better it's better to be cautious about it you know you never know it's one of those things like sure it's not gonna happen but it's one of those like what if it does yeah YouTube question, do you have any tips for not getting discouraged in college art classes? I'm completely self-taught, and it's a little hard focusing on improving. Well, you don't have to focus on improving. You just have to focus on doing the art. 
If you're doing it, you're going to improve. Don't focus on improving. Focus on doing the art. Taking what you're learning, putting it to use. That's what you want to focus on. Dustin oh. has a birthday coming up. Two weeks. That's right. I forgot about that. Did you? Yeah, I just... It, it, uh, uh, honestly, it's just went so far in the back of my mind. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, your birthday's in 13 days. Yeah, I keep forgetting that. Yeah. <laughs> Dustin's going to be a whopping 29 years old. Yep. After that is next year for the big old 3 -0. Yeah, your sister's already 30. Yeah. I think it's crazy that I have kids that are that old. It's just crazy that I'm getting that old. I know, it seems like yesterday that I was 30. <laughs> seems, like, seems like yesterday when I turned 21. Yeah. There we go, that feels pretty good. Big Tusker. Tusker. Jack on YouTube says, Dad jokes and art. What else do you need? <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot more. Well, for one thing, you need help. <laughs> I'm getting ready to head out to Res Rasputin. Aaron, do you love music shops? And what do you gravitate, gravitate towards if you do music shops? Do that, Say that again? Do you love music shops? Oh, music shops? Ah, I used to. But now I just get everything online. I'm not into like vintage albums and things like that. Oh, another dad joke. So a blind guy is walking along and falls into a well. It's because he didn't see that well. Oh. Uh, didn't see that coming. <laughs> oh, he really says, weird, I thought Dustin was younger than me for some reason, but he's older. Yeah, I'm... It's because of the way you act. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. I act like a 16-year-old sometimes. <laughs> I act like a kid when I should be an adult. Adult? Adult. You need to act your age. All right, let me see here. I'm going to try to do a... Uh, entertain them, Dustin, because i got to grab some stuff here. All righty. Um, or got my paintbrushes right here. Have you drawn any birds for Lightbox? Also, the Cintiq you have, uh, you take when you travel. Uh, is that the kind that doesn't require being plugged into a computer? It does require being plugged into a computer. I just bring my computer. I bring my laptop. So I've got all my brushes here. Let me go get a cup of water. A cup of water. Yeah. All right. Then, uh. I, I guess I will entertain you guys. So, yeah. Um, as Dad mentioned before, I've been doing a lot of uh, photography for, for Dad. And recently I got a new camera. For any of you guys that are interested in that. And it's this camera right here. It's the A6400. And I got this a week and a half ago. And then a couple... Then a, uh, couple of days later they announced the A6600 so I was like dang it but I'm going to stick around with this for, for a while longer and uh, far better than what I had before absolutely love it because the last the last one I had was the um, was a Canon it was a Rebel T6 and let me tell you this is far better and here he is and we're back and we're back so this is an experiment I've never done any kind of washes on this paper so I might ruin this drawing I might not. We shall see. What's is the camera happen? mirrorless? Yes, it is a mirrorless camera. I was talking gonna, about my camera while you, while you were out. Your camera. My camera. I'm going to go a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit of a bigger brush. <laughs> Dustin, could you sing some songs in a funny voice for us? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I got a little glass bowl right here you can see. Whoops, let's uh, slides. let's get this table level first of all. There we go. 
It might lead to readjust yeah, the camera. level. You want me to readjust the camera for you? No, I got it. You got it? Yeah. I got this. Oh, there we go. I got this ink right here. Just put a little bit in there. Just a few drops. Just to dad. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a wash. And so we're going to get this here. And I'm going to grab Does this drawing give you PTSD uh, from getting chased by an elephant in real life? <laughs> Just wondering. No, not really. Oh, you know what I need? I need another dish so I can uh, get the get the water. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, Ba Bow, Bow, is that how you say it? Bow Johnson? Um, considering that this is a mirrorless, yes, this is a mirrorless. And the camera I used before was a DSLR, or di Digital Single Lens Reflection, I think it's called. And we're back again. So what I've been doing up to this point is I've been using my Copic markers to do the grays, but I think I want to start doing some washes and just see how see how they're going to come out. So I've got my cup of water here. I'm just going to lay that down. And the ink is very strong so I don't want to It's going to come in here and Anything new with the wildlife drawing in Florida in winter or spring? Uh, could you do it at Animal Kingdom Lodge? Well, I just discovered something. What? The uh, the ink fr from the pens, it's marker proof, but it's not waterproof. Marker proof, but not waterproof. Yep, because all that ink is bleeding. <laughs> I just destroyed the drawing. Oh, no. <laughs> Is that bad? Like how bad? How bad is it? It's pretty bad. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna run with it anyway and see what happens. <laughs> Have fun with that. Yeah, all of this, all it's all bleeding. Okay. But I think it can be interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna run with it anyway. So is there anything new uh, with the wildlife drawing in Florida? Um, in oh, Winter yeah, Spring? sorry. Um, not yet. The place that I was going to use didn't work out. So I'm thinking about, uh, we're thinking about some other locations. Well, that was, that's disappointing for this to happen. But we might end up with a, a happy accident here. Who knows? I'm just going to run this right on through. Only time shall tell. So you're just trying to use the, uh, the ink wash for just the shading? Yeah. Gotcha. Except the uh, the problem is, is uh, because of the ink that I've laid down already, it's really heavy. One of the viewers just went, YELLOW! <laughs> what? Yellow, it stands for you only live once. Oh yeah. YELLOW! <laughs> um, yeah, lady, you see how dark that is now? Yeah. Uh, my lady says uh, maybe you can recover some detail with the gel pen. That's what I'm going to try. It's just that it's gone really dark now. So, oh well. Live and learn. Go through all that. You do a long, big drawing, and then boom, it's done. Yeah, Manny just, Manny just said, I always stick with a good old big pen. Yep. Well, I, I figured it was... I liked it because it, it, um, it mimics kind of the look of a, uh, a fountain pen or, or a, um, a crow quill type thing. But uh, 
and I put the markers over the top, and the markers, it doesn't bleed with the markers, but I guess with with water it does, which is kind of strange. I would think with it would bleed with markers as well. Uh, which animals do you prefer to draw the most? I like big animals. Elephants, bears, cats, big cats. Um... Lions and tigers and bears. So Lions and tigers and bears. So boom, boom. Ooh, so here, here, I'll start on the outside and work in towards the dark. That way it doesn't bleed too much into the dark. I'm definitely getting an interesting effect. <laughs> I'm not sh I wouldn't say I'm happy about it, but... Oh well. It's all about the experimentation. Yeah, I live and learn. So I just found out I can't use these uh, these pens for washes. But it does. It, I don't know. There's something interesting with with the uh, with the bleed on here. It says, I like how it looks with the wash. Kind of gritty. I love it. Yeah, it's a little gritty. Nitty gritty dirt band. Gritty gritty. I've got... Okay, so much for that. Let's get rid of that. That's clap! <laughs> Everybody else says, honestly, I like how, how it's giving a more intense look. Well... I, I don't. <laughs> but uh, let's see here. I need to get it to dry. I think you just need to do like a kind of like a gray wash over the over the tusks. Which is what you're doing right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why not? Take your advice. Thanks, son. You're, you're welcome, Father. Here. Nick yeah. says, "Dad joke. How do you find Will Smith in the in the snow? Look for the Fresh Prince." <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. CC Senka on YouTube says, "My watches buckle uh, the paper helps to tape it down." Oh yeah, but I'm not doing big washes. It does help to tape it down. You should tape it down, but uh, I didn't do that. I need my uh, my hair dryer. As the old buffalo said to the young calf, Bye, son. <laughs> Miss Bluefrost says, Micon pens are what I use with watercolor and they work really well. Yes, I've used them as well. And they don't bleed. I think they're made with India ink. What did I do with my hair dryer? Um, you did something with it? Back here somewhere. Somewhere in... The art stuff. Uh, put it back here. In here. 90% discount for the drawing? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to see what happens. This is, uh, you guys are getting a lesson on how to salvage as well. Where the heck is my hair dryer, Dustin? What did you do with my hair dryer? I, I did nothing with it. That was all you. Is it maybe one of the lower cabinets? Uh, I thought I had it in my desk. But I, when I cleaned my office, I cleaned it so well, I don't know where I put it. <laughs> don't you just love when that happens? Yeah. So it's buckled a little bit. You can see the buckling of the paper. Buckle, buckle, buckle. Well, it's not too bad. It's workable. I think I can work on it. Let's see what we got here. You packed the hair dryer the Hurricane Evac kit. <laughs> I'm going to open up a new pen for this one.
All right, let's see what we got. Let's see if this does anything. Well, it's gonna do something. People, I need some questions here. I can't just sit here and look pretty. Aaron left the hair dryer on. That's the reason for Dorian. Yeah. That's kind of working. Kind of sort of working. If you look at... Ugh. It's really wet there. Kind of getting some interesting feel to it up here. Oh, you got a hair dryer. I did. Thanks, baby. You're welcome. Great. So this is going to be a little bit loud. Can you plug this in down there, Dustin? Of course. Uh, this is going to be loud, so if you guys are listening on the headphones... Uh, rip headphones. Turn it... I'm just going to do this for about five minutes. What the hell? Push the test button. There we go. There we go. What kind of work have you done with pastels? You can take it off the down shooter probably for a little bit. I haven't really worked with pastel. That's one. Uh, that's a medium I've never really worked with. Do your kids draw? I don't know. Do they? Um, I don't draw as much as I used to. I just do a lot more photography nowadays. I mean, I worked on logos every once in a while, but that's about it. Oops. But um, Austin does um. She's been getting into watercolor re uh, lately. Yeah. She has, actually. Uh, for the latecomer, will we will you be doing a live stream on Tuesday? Next, Next Tuesday, yes. We will be back from Lightbox. We get back Monday night. And we will be back at it on Tuesday. So this, this is kind of working, I think. I don't know. We'll see. Are you ready to get back to some Photoshop live streams after so much pen and ink? Um, you know, I haven't really missed the the digital that much. But yeah, I mean, I'm ready. I'm definitely ready. What about pastel or colored pencils over the dry wash? Uh, that could work. But I want to keep it all pen work. And what kind of paper did you use? This is Strathmore Gray Toned gray. Paper. Right here. Strathmore Toned Gray. It's funny, it didn't even cross my mind that this would bleed at all because I used the markers on it. it didn't even cross my mind <laughs> is your drawing going to be a hundred bucks it might be a hundred and fifty I might end up loving it I might not want to sell it I just might keep this one for myself what's that pen you're using for the shine I'm loving it Oh, wait. I mean, ba da ba ba ba. I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Jelly Roll. 08. Right there. Opaque White Pen. Jelly Roll. Ba da ba ba ba. Ba da ba ba ba. I'm loving it. What kind of jobs can an illustrator get? 
um, illustration. <laughs> you get illustration jobs as an illustrator. You could be on staff illustrator for different types of companies. You can do book illustrations. You can do magazine illustrations. You can do all kinds of stuff. Jelly roll. Sounds like something tasty you can eat. Yeah, I know, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Jelly roll. Oh, I just made a painting and then I ate it. <laughs> just a roll full of jelly. Oh, jelly. Jelly. Oh, jelly. Yummy. Jelly, jelly, jelly. No! It's not too bad. It's not that great, but it's not bad. Definitely looks different from the other ones. That it does. That it does. Let me turn this this way a little bit. This is turning out to be one of my faves. 20% light, light box markup for happy accidents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, happy accidents can happen. It's all how you pull yourself out of it. Don't get freaked out. See, I'm going to put a little reflected light on them, too. Actually, I might be able to do that with pencil. At Disney, was it common to make models of characters? And if so, uh, what were they made of, and did you ever help make them? No, I never helped to make them, and yes, it was very common to make them. They are... Uh, They're called maquettes. 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 You have a maquette of uh, Nala up there, correct? And I have a maquette of Nala right here. Ta-da! This was made after the movie by a friend of mine. They're going to do the uh, face cam by switch back to the old. Oh, there it is. Yep. Nala. Nala, 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 Nala. Oh, you, don't, you don't remember what kind of material that's made out of? Uh, that's cast in, uh, uh, shoot, it's some kind of resin. What if I put a little blue in here? Oh, I thought it was like a type of uh, type of clay. No, they're they're uh, they're um, sculpted in clay and sculpty usually, but then they uh, yeah, this is kind of cool. Then it's cast in resin. Oh, I did not know that. Now you know. And so that way they can make like multiple copies for all the exactly. For all the people that worked on it. Yeah. Ah. So here I'm just, uh, I'm really experimenting. I just grabbed a blue Prismacolor. And I'm doing like a blue reflected light. Actually, I got a que uh, question about that. From the, so, as you said before, just now, for the Mary Cats, um Maquettes. Maquettes. They make the original uh, clay statue, and then they make a mold over it, so yeah. they can make, so they can mass produce more for all the people that worked on the project, right? Or specifically for that character. Yeah. Um, does the director or anyone specific on the crew get the original sculpture, or no? Do the they original keep that sculpture in, gets destroyed. Oh, the original gets destroyed in the process. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, when they make the mold, the original gets destroyed. Oh. Yeah. But I do have copies of all the maquettes of, uh, from Brother Bear. I've got copies of all of them. Yeah, one of them was even like Coda and, and Kenai. You could take Coda off, off of uh, Kenai's back. That's right. Yep, they were sculpted by the great Tony Cipriano. Tony Cipriano. Well, Did you saw come Tony. To our house every you, once in a while? No, but you saw Tony at the last when we went to uh, was it the uh, Christmas party? Went oh, to, at the Christmas party at his house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tony from New York. Yeah. He does all the sculptures of uh, like Frankenstein and all the movie yeah, monsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it now. Yeah. I knew that name sounded familiar. Yeah. So this is kind of coming out interesting. It's an experiment. 
I heard interns typically do in-betweens because it's easier, but that seems difficult to me. Is that true? No, we didn't use interns to do our in-betweens. We didn't. We actually didn't use interns to work on the movie because of, of uh, union issues and things like that. But in-betweens are difficult to learn if you're not if you've never done it before. So, but like anything else, you know, the more you do it, the better you'll get. Jimmy Nicholson says, I always told my students who worked in my department, you'll eventually make some mistake, like an ink drop. The good artist knows how to turn mistakes into something use usable. Well, hopefully I did that here. I'm just creating a little reflected light. A little cool reflected light on them. What's the sharpener I just heard? Oh, it's a Panasonic Auto Stop. It's the same pencil sharpener I've had. I've had that pencil sharpener for 30 years. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's an old sharpener. It is. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised that thing's still alive. Yeah. Larry says, man, the Prismacolor is making that drawing pop. Yep. Getting it to pop right off that page. See? We <laughs> ruined it. We drew it. It was going good. Then we ruined it. Now we saved it. I ruined it. The blue looks cool. It gives me a dusk sky light kind of vibe. Yeah, I was looking for a white pencil, actually. And, but I saw this and thought, hey, let's give it a little... Let's try it. Now I'm going to paint your paint blue. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. There. Not bad, not bad. Question. I know you did work on Tarzan, but... Why do uh, you call me butt? Because I can. Oh. Um, when Tarzan kills Saber... Sabor. Sabor, my mistake. And then carries the body around, who animates the body? Uh, the animator in charge of Tarzan or Sabor? Uh, I think it was the animator that did Tarzan at that point. The animator that did Sabor probably went over the drawings to make sure they were on model. But I'm pretty sure that was Glenn Keane that did that. Oh, he animated Tarzan? Yeah. He was the supervisor of Tarzan. Nice. In Paris, of all places. In Paris? He did it from Paris. Mm. Paris. So let's go back to our jelly roll. Where did you buy the book where you keep all these drawings? Oh, the uh, the portfolios? I, I just ordered them on Amazon. I couldn't find anything in my local uh, Office Depot that had the right size because these are 9 by 12. Everything was 8.5 by 11. So I just looked up 9 by 12, 9 by 12 inch um, portfolios on Amazon and those those came up. And they're just, uh, they've got 28, and I, I, I just signed it with a gold Sharpie. I didn't have, I didn't order it with my name on it. And uh, it's, it came with 28 pages inside, or 24 pages, sorry. 24 pages, and there's a little black divider inside, in, within each page, so you can put a drawing on either side. They're really cheap. I got three of them for like nine bucks. They're three bucks a piece, but it's really cool. And, uh, and it dis they display the drawings really well. So there you go. The more you know, the more you grow. Aaron, have you used Conti crayons? Yes. Is I have and I like them. Did I pronounce it right? Conti? Conte. Conte. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Aaron, did you design Mickey Mouse? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Yeah, you designed it right alongside Walt Disney, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I got done writing on my stone tablet, and I sat down and thought I'd design a, a mouse.
Walt and I were childhood friends. And I'm guessing Walt was all like, you know, I'm gonna get gonna be big someday. <laughs> That's exactly what he was like. <laughs> I'm gonna be big someday, kid. And it's all gonna be thanks to a mouse. <laughs> you know what happened when when he met Walt Disney? <laughs> Someone just asked that? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think he, you, you two met at a school, wasn't it? Yeah. It was back, back when you two were kids. How many drawings have you done so far? 59, including this one. 59. This one makes 59. 59 drawings. I think it would be a really interesting elephant drawing is if you made um, an adult Dumbo. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's a cool idea. I like that idea. What would he look like flying? Actually, I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that next. Larry says, oh, I saw a YouTube question. Have you heard of the His Dark Materials series by Philip Pullman before? There's a new TV adaptation uh, adaption coming out that I'm very excited about. Nick says, Golden Compass was the first try at this. I did see, um, I did see the TV adaption of it. Uh, I saw that, and um, it looks very, very cool. With your wealth of experience, is there anything you still struggle to draw? Hands. Hands? Yep. I always struggle to draw hands. Or is that it drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. So there is, uh, there it is. Tried to sacrifice, whoops, tried to salvage it. So there's our, uh, now I know I can't do ink washes with these pens. That's good to know. I wonder if I can do it with the ballpoints that they have. I wonder if the ballpoints bleed. This one I think is ballpoint. Yeah, that one's ballpoint. Now let's see what happens when I do a wash over it. Where'd my paintbrush go? You just had it. Did you put it over to your right? No. There's more over here I'll use, but... And that doesn't bleed. Nope, the ballpoints don't bleed. So that's good to know. So if I'm going to do one with a wash, I'll use the ballpoints. Which is this one right here that I just used. So that's the tool ballpoint. I might do that next. Use those and see what happens. See what I get out of it. But there's my elephant. I'll zoom in on it. Jimmy Nicholson has to my Dumbo idea. An adult Dumbo who has psychological issues. Like adults who were childhood actors. <laughs> So the blue on the camera, it looks like it's a lot more blue than it really is. It's not really that vivid. But there's the, there's the image right there. That's what we drew today. That was kind of fun. How long does it take to complete uh, one cell for a feature film? Seven. Seven. <laughs> um, it depends. You know, it depends on the complexity of that cell. It uh, depends on how many layers are. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into, you know, how long it takes to do anything on an animated film. But, um, you know, there's, yeah, it's it could be an hour. It could be a day. So it could, it's any number of, of factors. Uh, Derby says Disneyland was actually built right next to the pre-established theme park, Blazeland. 
<laughs> That's true. <laughs> Blaze land. Blaze land. So there is, there's our elephant walking along. And look at this. We can go, I'm going to grab this right here. We're going to open up our book. We're going to go to... You might want to zoom out the camera a little bit if you can. This page here. Boom. One more is done. There we go. Oh, you know what I haven't done? Signed it. I ain't signed it yet. It ain't signed it yet. How will somebody go and know it's your artwork if you don't sign it? Son of a gun. There. Boom. There we go. One more done. Yay. Next to the leopard. But that was fun. Uh, so there, there's a that was an unexpected lesson. You can, you can uh, mess up, and as long as you keep your wits about you, you can uh, you can save it. So and that's what I did. I tried to keep my wits about me, and I attempted to save it. So I think we got something that's pretty cool. So uh, what time we got, Dustin? It is two fifty two. Two fifty two. So we're at it for about two hours. Almost. So anyway, uh, that's going to be it for today, you guys. Uh, only one drawing, but like I said, you got a lesson in salvaging, <laughs> and that's another lesson too. Make sure you know what your materials are going to do before you do it. I thought they were waterproof. I learned that they weren't. <laughs> so <laughs> learn the hard way. Then you adapt. <laughs> so anyway, that was fun. Um, remember, we are going to be at Lightbox on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this coming September sixth, seventh, and eighth. Uh, in Pasadena, California, at the Pasadena Expo Center, I believe it is, and uh, it's right off of Colorado or near Colorado, right there. And um, we're going to have a great time. I'm going to—I've got four different lectures that I'm doing at various places around the expo, and I'm also going to be at our booth Friday. I'll be at the booth all day, so come on by and see us, and uh, we'll have a great time. We're going to have original drawings we're going to have prints i'll be signing autographs uh signing your prints all kinds of stuff so i really hope to see you guys there also big one september 28th is our live character design uh lesson workshop master class um uh, that's going to be like i said september 28th six hours long we're going to do two two different three hour uh uh sections and I'm going to be talking about all the fundamentals of character design, how I apply them, and we're going to design some characters right there on the spot. So it's everything I have in my course, plus we're going to be doing live stuff, and you're going to be able to ask questions. So go over to creatureartteacher.com slash live, and you'll get some information on it right there. It's going to be at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, that's my time, um, uh, on September 28th. So go check that out. It's going to be awesome. We're going to be, I can tell you, it's going to be a lot of fun. I love doing character design live because I'm kind of thrown to the wolves. And you're going to see me struggle. You'll see me struggle. You'll see me work out my struggles. And hopefully we'll come out the other side and you guys will be better for it. And I'll be better for it. <laughs> so um, the other thing too, check out our Patreon page. Um, Patreon has been really great for us. And it's just something that helps us bring in a little extra income so we can create more materials for you guys. And um, and if you do donate, you get things in return. So a dollar a month, one dollar will get you images that you can do download, you can use as wallpaper, you can do whatever you want with them. Uh, the five dollar a month uh, tier is going to get you the same images, but as uh, Photoshop files. So you'll be able to open those up, check out all the layers, see how I break them, how I create them. Uh, it's a good lesson, do, be, just being able to do that. And then the $10 a month level will get you all of that, plus uh, an added live stream where I'm work, talk, working and talking with just you guys uh, from Patreon. So that'll be cool. And we have a live stream coming up for that. And uh, we'll probably do it when we get back from Lightbox. So there you go. And then one last thing I just want to mention again, because um, I did, did I miss anything else? Um, oh, no. we, our sale, uh, don't forget our, our Labor Day sale is happening till the end of the day today. So get over there. This is going to be your last chance to get 30% off of everything on the website. So that's huge. 
Um, that's a big savings, especially if you're going back to school, uh, art school, whatever it might be, and you want to get some stuff. It's uh, it's a really good savings. But also, I want to show you this one more time. Take the camera off. Um, I just want to make another plug for uh, Everyday Easel. The Everyday Easel right here. Uh, you can see it at everydayeasel.com. Like I said, I don't normally do this, but I love this easel so much. I really want you guys to check it out. The same way that I've talked about by Artie's and promoted Lilo Roche, which you also should go check out. That's liloroche.com for the Artie's. Uh, go to everydayeasel.com and check out these easels. It's amazing because not only is it like a regular easel, easel where you can, I can lay it down flat if I want to in this way. Um, I can move it up and down. But the way that it, you know, it's on a, uh, just look how smooth that is. It's on this little piston that moves up and down. But the thing that really makes it unique are these, the magnets. I can take these magnets, attach them to the stretchers on the canvas, and then come back and boom, it's attached. I can turn it any way I want, and it's, it's attached. So... Uh, if I have scrap that I want to use as reference, these magnets here uh, will attach there. This is a shelf that comes off. This is an armrest that you can put on there. This shelf, uh, these magnets are so strong. Um, you can see the back of them right there. They just, boom, attach. So it's a very cool, there we go. It's a very cool easel. So go to everydayeasel.com, check it out, because um, I'm going to be using this thing. In the next few weeks, I'm going to do some oil painting, which I haven't done on a live stream. Uh, I'm going to do some oil painting live stream, and uh, we'll have a great time doing that, and I'm going to use this easel. So go to everydayeasel.com. We're also going to do a YouTube video uh, specifically for this easel, and I want you to check that out. So anyway, thanks a lot for today. Um, it was fun creating this guy right here if you can see it there it is it was fun creating him it was fun making a mistake and then surviving it not panicking and actually coming up with probably a better image than i would have had i not made the mistake so that was kind of cool so thanks for hanging out with me and doing that remember go out and put some beauty back in the world we're artists and uh, it's up to us to have everybody see the world in a new way and so if we can do that then you're doing your job so go out, put some beauty back in the world, be nice to somebody, make the world a better place. It's up to us to do that. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Dustin, and Don't I'm going to, to see... Shopping cart away. What's that? Shopping cart. Yeah, I put your shopping cart away, too. Always do that. Yeah. <laughs> At least do that. <laughs> At least. Don't leave your shopping cart out in the parking lot. So, uh, but anyway, I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, we're not going to see you on Thursday. This will be our last live stream until next Tuesday. We'll see you in one week. I hope you guys have a great week. Go put some beauty back in the world, and I'll talk to you next week. Dustin? Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. And until then, uh, yeah. Have a good what? one. Have a good one. Glad you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the next one as well. See you next week, Tuesday. And as always, Cowboy Bebop. See you guys. <laughs>